I went to church with her uh, that they were talking about gender roles and marriage, and they were saying, women, you must do this. Men, you must do this, that. Yep. Um, and they talk about sex is all about glorifying Jesus, and you know you need to be thinking about God. While Which you're is why sex. so many and people are screaming his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's kind of weird to me, but so uh, afterwards, uh, she asked, you know, how do you think? How did, what did you think of it? And I said, you know, it's, it's all right, but I obviously I disagreed with some things, and I told her why I disagreed um, with the idea of gender roles and. Uh, you know, I gave her my own explanations for what I believe is correct um, in a meaningful relationship, uh, both in marriage and sexually. Mm -hmm. And I rem recalled uh, statistics that I found uh, about to go on marriage that showed um, non-denominational Christians as having the highest divorce rate. And she's a non-denominational Christian. Um, so I... I like to give evidence for, you know, why I say the things I say and the things that I believe. So I pointed this out to her and I said, well, according to this study, uh, you are more likely to, be, to get a divorce than I am or to, for any other Christian denomination for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, and she did not like that at all. And now she won't talk to me about her anymore. So mm -hmm. um, one of the things she said to me was that uh, I minded and judgmental about it um, and she said um, not things that come easily and you, you grow in your faith and you walk with God you learn more about the issues over time so my first question regarding this was was my criticism of a church sermon unfair because I lacked experience and knowledge about things I, 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 mean, I, I find that I find this accusation that you're judgmental uh, to be kind of a so what you invited me your, to your church so I could listen and make a judgment about what I heard. Yeah, you asked How my could opinion. I not be judgmental? The yeah. fact that I didn't come to the same conclusion that you did um, is somehow a bad thing in your eyes. And, mm -hmm. but, and yet you were, sitting, you were willing to discuss this, to explain what you agreed with, what you didn't, and why uh, you, were, you were willing to offer data. One of you is being reasonable, and the other one is just trying to convert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's there's nothing at this point. Well, I, I I don't know this particular scenario. I do know that there comes a point with some people where you are just not going to make any more headway. And usually, one of the first signs is when they uh, refuse to answer or address a particular point you've made, and then want to stop talking to you, or at least you know they get mad, or they you're closed-minded, you're too judgmental. Uh, Anything yeah, along those is, lines. Which is what they say when you just give them the answer that is not the answer they want, yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times what, what Christians usually mean sometimes when they say, well, you're an atheist, well, I have a bunch of questions for you. And, and they'll start hitting with them. As, they're not really looking for answers and they're not really looking for arguments. They're looking for validations and they're looking for things that they can pick at. Right. Um, they're looking for and, openings. Yeah. And, um, and it's amazing how quickly sort of, you know, the, the, the standards change or the, uh, the criteria change when you give the answers that are not exactly the answers they're happy about. I've been uh, responding to um, some, some guys, uh, some commenters on the Atheist Experience blog just today, as a matter of fact. And recently there was, uh, there's a little thing, there's a little page on Lee Strobel's website, you know, the, the apologist, and he... Uh, where he posted, um, well, I asked several of my co-apologists and colleagues for, for questions that they wanted to ask atheists. And there are about six or seven of them, right? So I, in, in two posts, I answered them all, right, to the best of my ability. And now we're getting Christian commenters coming onto the blog saying, well, you missed the guy's point and you haven't read all his books, so, you know, you're not really qualified. And I'm like, look, they asked me, okay, these were questions that they have for atheists, all right? Now, if... If a specific apologist is going to ask a question that is loaded with what I consider to be unfounded assumptions, right? Well, I'm just, from, first off, I'm just going to answer the question that I am asked. If a Christian or an apologist or whatever asks me, X, what do you think about so and so? And what do you think about this? And what is your answer to this? I'm going to answer the question asked. You know, but the, when I give the answer, you know, to, to then say, oh, well, you're, you're not really qualified to answer that in the first place because you haven't read all of his 15 incredible books on theology and scholarship and what have you. I'm like, 
well, how am I supposed to? You can't do that. You can't go to someone and say, well, here's my question. But before you answer my question, I also want you to read all these books. You know, otherwise, you're not, you're not in a position to contradict all of the unfounded assumptions that I'm going to load my question down with. And so, it's, a so, shame. So, yeah. it's a shame that we can't really do that because yeah. I have a number of books that I'd actually want people to read. Yeah. Um, yeah. It would be nice yeah. if before you got to call into the show, you had yeah. to read Enumeracy. Sure, um, yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, the standards change suddenly. You know, the playing field suddenly becomes uneven when you really begin taking them on in a way that they don't like. So. Yeah, and I, I pointed all those things out to her, and I was just wondering if you guys agreed with that. You do, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, to give her credit, though, uh, she, I was the one that initiated this conversation with her about religion, So, and she's told me repeatedly that she's not trying to convert me. Uh, I don't believe she is, but I do believe that she wants me to believe the same things that she believes. I mean, I, I think we all do uh, to a certain extent, but... I just wanted to point that out. Uh, I don't think that her purpose with me coming to church was uh, to convert me. Actually, the only, the, when she asked me to come to church with her was after I asked her to watch some of your video clips with me so that she could try to get an understanding of where I was coming from since I have a lot of uh, agreement with what you guys say on the show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then, then that's, that's fair. And, let, and then let her call us if she's up to it. Uh, I mean, we'd like to hear from more theists today, but uh, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think you're on the right track. Um, I think you have to be prepared for the fact that you may actually end up losing a friend over this. I mean, mm -hmm. unfortunately, uh, I've lost friends um, over the fact that I'm no longer a Christian. Uh, it it happens, and and mm -hmm. I I have to take comfort in the fact that uh, I didn't stop being their friend. I didn't decide that because we don't agree on something that I no longer want anything to do with them. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that couldn't happen. Very well could be the case that I might have a friend who is just too uh, religious in a particular way that I no longer have any fun associating with them, or everything that we try to do together becomes about them uh, trying to convert me back to whatever it is that their beliefs are. And in that case, then I, I wouldn't you know, be wanting to spend time with them. Relationships right. end. Yeah. It's just a, a simple fact of life. I would just say that if any Christian friend of yours decides that they want to talk to you about their religion and your atheism and, and have a meeting of minds or questions or debates, just, just respond to them honestly. Just always be honest in your answers to them. And, and always be honest in giving, like you were with her on your opinion of the sex sermon that you saw. Giving, just always be honest and, and open in your responses. And there's no real reason ever to feel guilty about that. And if they choose to take that, take offense to that, simply because you gave an honest answer that wasn't the answer that they wanted to hear, sorry to say, I mean, it's hard, you know, it's, it is their problem. Yeah. And a lot of times, even when you're being incredibly polite, and I'm really good at being rude, but I know that's not a lot of people's style. And so, uh, you know, even if you're being just very, very sweet and uh, understanding in your answer, if it is still something that they feel challenges beliefs that are deeply, deeply meaningful and personal to them and essentially that they've built their entire life and sense of well-being and purpose upon, well, they're going to think you're being. They're going to tell you, you're rude, you're, rude, you're judgmental, even when you are going out of your way not to do that. It's just right. the reaction that they have because what you're doing is you're sort of chipping away at a big foundation they've built their whole identity upon. Yeah, so, and I so think that's that's just a defense response. It's not anything you're doing. Right, and I think that might be a reason why she's decided to stop talking with me about this is because she'll, she doesn't have... A she'll come crawling to... back. <laughs> just give her time. Uh, they always yeah, well, do. Like, I know I have religious friends, too, and I, I don't really care what people believe. It's not that important to me, but, you know, she's a young Earth creationist who thinks the Earth is 6,000 years old. It denies evolution simply because she says it cannot be true because the Bible says otherwise, and I just, I, I don't know where to go with that, you know, I, I don't know if there was one mean. thing that I would hope to convince her, it's that, uh, you know, to look at things objectively and to use reason and not just to blindly trust some book that was written thousands of years ago uh, by authors who we don't know about um, a God that may or may not exist. It just, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, and I think it's just, I'm you know, gonna... just I would yep. say, though, that by the time somebody gets to the point where they are, they're flatly saying, um, 
I'm going to deny this massive amount of scientific evidence, and I'm unopened to the opportunity uh, of being convinced by additional evidence because I have this preconception that this book that says X is necessarily true, and there's no evidence that could possibly be presented that would change my mind. You are wasting your time if you're yeah. going to try to have a conversation with that person <clears throat> at all. Yeah, uh, you're done. Change your mind. Yeah, it, you're, it's they, just not going to happen. Yeah, you're done with that person at that point. Yeah. They, they have to have uh, something drastic happen in their life to change their perspective. Uh, there has to be a paradigm shift in what they're willing to and analyze as evidence, what they're, what they're willing to consider, and, and they have to be able to eliminate those, those preconceptions that they have.